this service in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Uh, church, I was told one hand going up to the Lord shows respect. Two hands show surrender. Yes. If you want to surrender to him, let go. Lord God, we uh, love you, Lord Heavenly Father God. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Lord God, that you continue to conquer us, Almighty Conqueror, yes. Lord God. Please forgive us of our sins, Lord Jesus. You told the disciples, Lord God, not to rejoice over the power of healing, but rejoice because the names are written in the book of life, Lord Heavenly yes. Father God. I pray, Lord God, that you write our names in the book of life, Lord God. Our families hurting right now, Lord God. That you will bring comfort to them, Lord God. Everybody watching, Lord God, may you touch everybody, one of us in the church, Lord God, and our families with the Holy Ghost right now, Lord God. Please forgive us of our sins, any sins we might commit in the future, Lord God. Please baptize us in your Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus, Lord God. We ask you all this in Jesus' name. We give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the mighty glory the church name and word says. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. You may be uh, seated in the presence of the Lord. Thank you for coming out. We want to give uh, Buddy the mic for announcement. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Talk about starting up. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Have a beautiful yeah. Sunday morning oh, once again. Welcome, everybody. Man, if there's a beautiful presence of the Lord in here today. Amen. Amen. Give it up for Jesus one more time. Jesus. Right before we get started with our announcements, if you have a cell phone, if you can please turn them on silent. Amen. We don't want to get disrupted. Amen. When the word of God is coming out. Amen. Hallelujah. First announcement. I know right around next Sunday. Mark your calendars, or if you haven't marked them already, on October the 2nd, Pastor Mondo's birthday. Guys, party, amen. How many of us appreciate our pastor? Amen. Amen. So um, we still have the sign-up sheet in the back. Um, I believe there's a couple of slots left open. If you can, uh, see Sister Lisa in the back. Amen. Um, also, um, if you can, or I just want to put this out there for the ones that aren't here today to keep them in prayer. Amen. amen. If you're looking at us on Facebook, YouTube, amen, keep our um, brothers and sisters who aren't here today, keep them in prayer. Amen. amen. We want to see them come out. Amen. amen. Um, how many of us know that this uh, next month coming up is conference time? Amen. amen. If you haven't been to a conference or if you're interested in going to a conference, amen, be ready, amen, because we're on the on the topic of staying the course, amen. That's the theme this year is staying the course, amen. How many of us know that if you go off course, amen, what happens? It's all bad, amen. So we want to continue, amen. We want to continue to stay on that course, amen, so that God can bless us. How many of us want to be blessed, amen? Well, I'll tell you like this. You go to the conference, you're going to get double blessed, amen. You're going to get triple blessed, amen. And not only that, it doesn't have to be financially, amen. It could be a family member, amen, that's still out there, amen, a friend or a co-worker, amen, that you've been praying for, amen. And that's how God moves, amen. It's not just financially. It could be for a loved one, amen. How many of us got loved ones out there that are still lost in the world? Well, if you go to conference, amen, there, when we get together in the body of Christ, amen, the unity that comes together, amen, how many of us know that our God's a moving God? Amen. Our God's an awesome God, amen? He's always doing something, amen? amen? So let's give it up for our conference. I know that we have a video. I don't know if it's ready yet. So it's going to um, let us know the locations, amen? How many of us know there's three conferences going on at one time, amen? Amen. So if you miss, uh, if you come to our conferences, they're going to be available on YouTube, amen, for you to view them later. But how many of us know you go to conference, amen, and they're powerful. All the things that we have from Living Word, you know, there was roaring like a lion, amen. There was God's arrows. All these conferences that, that we go to, amen, they're impacting, amen. We want to continue to, to go to these conferences so that way we can get fed with the Word of God, amen. So go ahead if you can pay attention to the monitors.
Your word says to die is to gain, my boy. So let us believe that, my Lord, because you are faithful, my God. In every situation, every problem, every trial, my God, just let us know that it's all in your hands, my God. So we trust you, my God. We love you. We praise you. We honor you, my God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Yeah, let's give it up for Jesus. Uh, right now, we're going to uh, go ahead and dismiss our ushers as well as our children. But how many are excited to be in the house of God? Oh, come on, we can make some noise. Today is just like a beautiful day, you know, just to see, you know, coming to church, you know, that's one of the main things that I always say, you know what, I need to get to the Lord's house, amen? amen. Because you know what, with the presence, you know, when we understand this, you know, the presence is really sometimes not in our home, and we're not doing what we have to keep doing for the Lord, so when we come to church, you know, we start feeling the presence, and why? Because we're all, you know, praising God, it's like a, a unity, tell your neighbor, it's like unity, being unity. together, amen? Amen. And, um, you know, yesterday, if we can take a seat right now. I want to talk about yesterday. You know, we had our conference meeting and, you know, the preparation that what it's taking, you know, what's taking place. You know, a lot of us, when we understand this, it's not just a conference, you know, where, you know, we all get together. No, it's a place where we can come together as one body, one one mind, and, and, and to do the will of God, you know, what God has called us. But in reality, you know, when we really stop and think about it, it takes uh, us to come together as a church. That way we can really impact lives that are really out there that maybe don't know Jesus. Yeah. So there is a purpose behind it and why we do the conferences and why the impact should, you know, be impacting, you know, people. This is a time where we can bring our loved ones, amen, and where they can see like, wow, man, what is this? And, 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 you know, what happens is they get drawn, you know, to what God has for their life, amen? But it was uh, real good, you know, the way Pastor Edgy was putting it down, talking about, you know, the unity. You know, the unity is in the church. It doesn't mean that, you know, when when there's unity, tell your neighbor, it, it means there's the togetherness. When there's togetherness, that means that we are able to accomplish more. Amen. And, and if you understand that, you know, to accomplish more, that means that um, it's just not the pastor's responsibility. It's all of our responsibility to do this, especially when we come together as a church. And uh, I don't know, but how many want your loved ones to be saved at the end of the day? Okay, well, then, you know, tell your neighbor, it's going to cost you. And it's going to cost you, you know, and I'm not just talking financial, but it's going to cost your time. But when you understand that, it, it, it's all good because now the devil can't really, that it, it's too hard to get to where it is when we're all locking arms. We're just grabbing them and taking them. So that unity was very powerful yesterday, you know, just to see that, hey, we can be there and to do the will of God that God has taught us. Amen. But let's give it up for the Lord this morning. Amen. Today I'm not going to keep you too long, you know, I'm just going to keep you long enough, amen, like I think I have like 40 pages, okay, maybe like maybe 10 minutes each one, or no, no, yeah, 40 pages, that's like 4 hours, okay, it be one of them long services, no, just kidding, but uh, today, you know, we've been talking about getting in the race, right, and like every, every uh, last service I say that's the last one, but I believe God says no, don't let it be the last one, because in reality, we're in a race now 
they, um, it should be different than the course or the, the course of our life that we were on before. So that means when we're in this race, that means that we have to now start changing what's going on in our lives now. Uh, we belong to a big God, amen. amen. And when we understand now, when we're in this race, now we're in the winning team. Tell your neighbor, now we're in the winning team. Now we're in the winning team. Before, I, I, I want to, you know, bust your bubble. Before, you, when you were out in the world, you were in the losing team. Right. But you didn't even know it. You thought you were already a winner, amen? amen. But in reality, no, you were still losing, amen? amen? But now, you know, Paul, we talked about in 2 Corinthians, you know, the understanding that even though in this race, we're going to learn how to run, amen? Because how many of us know just because we accept Christ... And start here, you know, that's the beginning part. This is where you now made a choice, tell your neighbor, you made a choice to uh, become a winner now for your race in your course that's set before you. But not only understanding that, now you understand now you have a purpose. Tell your neighbor, I have a purpose now. I have a purpose. A purpose for my life, and it's not to fulfill my own desires, but to fulfill what God has for me. And believe me, He will get you to where you need to get, you know, when we're missing things, right? Amen, right. But in 1 Corinthians 9, 24, 27, you know, Paul says, Do you not know that in a race, all runners run? So in this new course, we're going to have to run. But also he talks about it's meaning the very best to win. In other words, if we're going to run, we have to have a winner's mentality. We're going to want to get in. Get in it where we fit in. Amen? Amen? And then it goes on, but only one receives a prize. Run the race in such a way that you may seize the prize and make it yours. Okay? In such a way that you may seize the prize and make it yours. He goes... Then he goes, now every athlete who goes into training and competes in the game is disciplined and exercises self-control. On Wednesday, we talked about self-control. But then he goes, in all things, they do it to win a crown that withers. But we do it to receive an unperishable crown that cannot wither. Verse 26 says, therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do, I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you, Lord, this morning, Father God, for your presence, Father God, in this house, Lord. I pray, Father God, that you continue to move through this service, Father God. Open up our hearts, Lord. Open up our minds, Lord. Let us be able to receive your word, Father God, that is being ministered this morning. But through it all, Lord Jesus, always giving you the praise, the honor, and the mighty glory. In Jesus' name we say, amen, amen. and amen. If we can give it up for the Lord this morning. So Paul here in this passage, he's talking about that all runners run, meaning that Paul is letting the, the Corinth church, letting them know that I believe that maybe there was, you know, things going on, you know, in life. Because, you know, how many of us know that things go on in our life? Amen. Amen. And, and what it does, maybe sometimes we'll get to the Lord and we'll get to know who he is. And, you know, everything's starting to go good in our life. But for some reason or another... There was a distraction and it pulled us out of the course that we were on before. Then what happens is within time and years go by, we find ourselves back on this course that God has been prepared for your life. And it's still there. And you understand like, man, Lord, why did I leave last time? But it happens, it's like a, like a, 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 a race that keeps going on. And, and if we don't get in, you know, where we fit in, amen, in the Lord, what happens is that we end up coming back again. And I talk about it like this because I've been there and done that myself. But one thing is that Paul says, you know, you got to have dedication. When you're dedicated to something, that means you're going to go all the way. The prize is still waiting for us until we come home to our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's the way we should be focused on that prize. We're not giving in. We're not giving in through the distractions of life. But then also, 
He talks about in this race, we talked about, we have to be disciplined. Many of us don't like discipline and sometimes when we, uh, it, it basically, we don't like to hear the truth. Amen? Amen? We don't like to be told what to do. Amen? But in this race, you know, we have to be disciplined. It's like if you're practicing for something, you know, if you're getting ready to do something and you want to become a winner, then you're going to have a winner's mentality and you're going to have to discipline your life. So that's what Paul was talking about here. But then also there's a deliberation. How many of us know that, you know, with meaning this, don't compromise because after, you know, we think that we already arrived too, can be a thing that will pull us out of that course. I don't know if you've ever been here, like you think that you already made it. No, we haven't made it. We have to understand until we come to the foot where Jesus is there and he says, come on in. Amen. And God says, come in, my son and daughter. Hey, well done while you're here. Then we know we've made it. Paul understood that. Paul understood that, hey, wait a minute, I'm not going to stop until I come home to you, Lord. And I'm going to keep going preaching the good news of you for what you've done for our life. Yeah. But then also, Paul talks about here on 27 or 26, he says, Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself not be disqualified for the prize. Meaning that he's talking about that, hey, maybe we can get disqualified. And uh, in this race, that's why there's all these things that are going at us. And we have to understand that, hey, we got to keep going. Amen. Tell your neighbor, we got to keep going. You see... The mindset of a runner is they do their very best to win. I don't know if you've ever seen a track runner, a man that running and, you know, and, and they do their very best to win. And some of them are fast, amen. But also, you know, when we talk about in this course, you know, and I was talking about with Brother Tony, you know, like he said, you know, it, it, you know, we're not sprint runners, amen. Tell your neighbor, we're not a sprint runners. We're marathon runners because we want to reach that goal, amen, of Jesus Christ. When we become a sprint runner, what happens is it feels like, man, we're, we're, I want to do this, I want to do all this, I want to do all that. And next thing you know, boom, you fall off. So God says, no, my son, daughter, don't worry. You're, you're, you're a marathon runner for me. I'm the prize, and it's going to take a little while. And in this prize, how many of us know when the runner's running, there's hurdles? Yes. And those hurdles is the one because you got to train to get over that hurdle. Can I get an amen? amen. Yes. Oh, we're going to clap for Jesus. Let's clap for him right now. <laughs> so in other words, the mindset of a runner, they do their very best to win. Run your race in such a way that you may seize the price and make it yours. In other words, own it, knowing it's God's will for your life to win. Amen. You know, our God has that that he wants us to win. But let's move on. Now we understand now we have a purpose. Tell your neighbor, we have a purpose. Now. We have a purpose. I didn't know we had a purpose, but, you know, I thought my purpose was my purpose, but no, we have a purpose, okay? Proverbs 19.21 talks like this, many are the plans of a person's heart, but it's the Lord's purpose that prevails, amen? Meaning that many are the plans in a per person's heart. But it's the Lord's purpose that prevails, amen? amen. Meaning that amen. we have a lot of plans, amen? Tell your neighbor, he's talking to you this morning. Amen. We have a lot of plans in our hearts, but you know what? When we understand that, it's God's purpose that will prevail in our life. Amen. And if we just give in, you know, to that, that's why many of us throw in the towel because our plans are more important than God's plans in your life. Amen? Amen. When we understand that, you know, Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper and not to harm you, to give you now a hope and a future. But many times in life we feel that we have it all figured out. Amen? Nobody here? 
No, nobody here. Hallelujah. Praise God. Then, yeah, you're sticking it out till when we finish and go home to the Lord. But in reality, you know, that's how we are. You know, we think we got it or we know better. Then what happens is, you know, the plans that we have, the big dreams, we, we end up pursuing the wrong purpose in our life again. You know, things start coming good in our life, you know, just because you come to church and you start getting blessed, you know, uh, our purpose, you know, is not focused no more on Jesus. Now we think because of our, you know, our, our, the things that we're pursuing in our heart. That's why it says many are the plans in a person's heart, but it's the Lord's purpose that prevails. So you can really sit and ask yourself, wait a minute. Okay, Lord, I see that I have success in you. I see that I'm going towards, you know, where you've called me, right? But now I want to ask my heart, is it to do your purpose or is it still to do my purpose? And I see because I, I ended up falling back that way myself, me, my wife, my family. We ended up going out because we, success, I believe it was success that started happening in my life. And I thought, hey, wait a minute. We got it now. We got it from here. And, and, and I really believe that we tend to forget, you know, where God really pulled us out of, amen, when we were all broken, messed up. I'm talking about mocos coming out of our nose and everything. And we were crying. Hallelujah. And he fixes us and he starts blessing us. And then we just say, okay, Lord, I got it now. I got it now. I'm going to keep going. I got it. I got it from here. But these are the plans of a person's heart. In other words, we have these big plans, big dreams. We, we begin to pursue wealth, some fame, glory, and even relationships. In other words, we get emotional involved. We invest our time and our resources in our own resources and in our hearts. And that we truly believe our plans will come to be. I see it all the time. Many men, women of God, you know, they have good intentions. Don't get me wrong. But you know what? If God is not going to be in it, if your time is not invested in him, then you're going to miss it. Yep. And that's what he wants to do. He wants to show you, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're in this race with me now. You know, I want you to catch what I'm trying to teach you. You know, our purpose, our plan should be in him. If it's not in him, then it's in the world. And that's where we have to understand where he's trying to open up our eyes. Amen? Amen. So then we go on. We truly believe that our plans will come to be. But then they fail, they fall apart. What happens when our plans fall apart? We fall apart. Amen? Yeah. What, what else happens? Then we collapse. What happens when we collapse? Or when they all, everything collapses in our life? We collapse. When our plans fail, we feel like failures. Amen? Why? Because we try to do it without God. One thing that I have learned, that anything that I do, God has to be first in it. Amen? I don't care what it is. Amen? And I don't care if I'm just driving to the corner store. God, please be here with me. Amen? Amen. Because if something was to happen, you know, for me going from here to the story and something was to happen, I want to make sure that I'm here there with them, amen, and say, well done, my son, come on in. I don't want to be like this. What, you, what was your name again? Let me see the board. Hey, Jesus, can, can, can you check the archives? Well, well, if you have a middle name, oh, yeah, I got all these 1,100 names. No. We want to be for sure. We want to have that confidence that, hey, Lord, I'm here. You know, my promise is who's waiting there for me. Everybody that has already got there before me. Hey, hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. And we're going to be cheering on. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It's written in the palm of his hand. Yeah, amen. Hallelujah. Why? Because we try to do it without God. In our pride and our stubbornness, we blame those also around us. We start blaming our spouses. We start blaming family members, even the church family, maybe even our pastors. But mainly because we try to do it on our own, we didn't have a good plan or purpose. We run around, again, like Paul says, aimlessly. There is no more uh, aim to do the will of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. 
But when we don't know our purpose, we open the door for the devil. Meaning the devil will squeeze his way in any way that he can. Yeah. Because why? We start, he starts to distract us of our true purpose in life that we're supposed to be doing. It's the will of God. If we don't have a purpose, the devil will find one for you. Without Jesus in control, the devil will be in control of you. Without purpose, we do our own things. Anybody here ever do their own things? Amen. Hallelujah. I'm at an honest church today. Amen? Amen. But yeah, in reality, we end up doing our own things or things become more important than to do the will of God. You see, Proverbs again, 1921, many are the plans in a person's heart, but it's the Lord's purpose that will prevail. In other words, prevail means to prove more powerful than opposing forces, meaning that regardless what you're going through, regardless of what distraction is hitting you, to the left, discouragement, all of these things that are coming against you. It's God's purpose that's still going to prevail over that situation. And not only that, just understanding that I am a child of God. That God will never leave us nor forsake us. Amen. I'm going to continue to prevail through all these seasons in our life. Amen. Amen. And the enemy will make you feel like you're not going to prevail over something. Because sometimes we look at the situation... More than we look at Jesus saying like, oh my God, how am I going to go like this? How am I going to go through this? Amen? Amen. Amen? But now when we understand prevail, the definition is to prove more powerful than an opposing force. Meaning the devil has no authority over our lives. If we understand that, hallelujah, I'm in the winning team now, amen. Jesus has overcome even death on this world. He took the gates of hell from him. He took the keys of hell from him. That means that our purpose shouldn't be down there no more. It should be up there. I'm in the winning team. And anything that comes against me. The enemy still, I'm not going to give him that authority over my life. Amen? Amen. So in other words, to prove more powerful than an opposing force. When we understand the enemy, you know, we understand the opposer. A lot of times ourselves become our own enemies. Amen? Because the desires of our own flesh is something that will even hold us back. The devil's right there standing. Hey, I didn't have nothing to do with that. Amen? And he's pointing at you, you're lying, amen? Because our flesh, the, my Bible says that my flesh, it's contrary to what the Spirit of God wants to do. Amen. Understanding that my flesh, amen, sometimes wants to overtake, you know, what God has called me to do. But still, you know, I have a choice that I can say, child, I'm done. I'm not going to do that, amen? Amen. And that's when you have that strength. Now you have that power, amen, where the enemy, you'll start understanding the enemy and his craftiness. Because how many of us know that the enemy, the devil's crafty? Yes. He's always trying to throw them temptations at you. And some of us, our flesh is weak, amen. Our flesh is weak and then they bite. But that's what God is saying. Don't worry, man. You're, you will be able to, Paul is saying, you'll be able to overcome your flesh. Amen. Your flesh is not going to have no authority which is going to make you to make the wrong choices. You're still going to understand to do the good things of God. Amen. Yes. Amen. So now we understand about prevailing. Prevailing means to win, to triumph, to succeed, and to overcome. You know, I share with you, just because we serve Christ now, it doesn't mean that we're not going to go through things in life. Yes. You know, it means that now you've got in the ring. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on. You know, it got quiet in this holy place when I said, I got in the ring. Amen. But I'm going to win. Why? Because my Jesus already won. Amen. And he's the one that's going to fight for me. Amen. If I think that I'm going to get beat to the left, to the right, I'm going to get on my knees and pray because I know my God got this battle for me already. And I'm in the winning team. Hallelujah. Oh, if some of you clap, amen. If you want to receive it, you receive it. You see, but if we're pursuing God's purpose for our lives and if we're in our faith and trust in Jesus, then we will succeed. It means it has to be in him. 
It's God's purpose that brings meaning to life now. Again, Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For he knows the plans that he has for us to prosper us with now a new hope and a future for our lives. Amen? So it's to prosper us. It's God's purpose that brings meaning to life now. Now we have a meaning to our life. Amen? You know, when we really look about when this COVID hit, it... um. It, it brought a lot of suicides to people. And it, it, what it did, it kind of alienated, you know, yeah. our children. And, and because of God, you know, the, the thing, it, it was like people now were hungry for other things than it was the things of God. And what was happening, there was a lot of suicides that took place. Not only that, you know, we look in the book of Eschiliastics, right? Look at Solomon. Solomon, Solomon, had all the wealth in the world, all the fame, the power he wanted, he, all the women he could desire. He had 700 wives. Man, that was, must have been expensive, amen? And three, uh, I forgot how they said, concubines, I believe those are mansions, amen? And he still wasn't happy. And, and in the end, he said, it is all fully if you're not serving God. Right. Yeah. Meaning it's all foolishness. Amen. Fully means foolishness. If you're not serving God. Yeah. You see when you're moving towards your purpose. Not only will you find satisfaction. You will, you will have peace and joy. Within your life. Amen. How many are wanting that peace and joy. Amen. In other words, now it's no longer a struggle or a burden that you carry, but there is a newness in life, amen? amen. Now you're joyful, amen? Now, now you can put a smile on that Come face, on, amen? Come on. Come on. Yeah. You see, things start to happen. You start to look different, amen? Like Pastor Edgy said, you can now smile so we can see that one too now, amen? <laughs> you start to talk different. It's no longer about you, but what, what God has done in your life, amen? That's what I really believe that God takes that, that look out of us. Because how many of us know that I have the ay 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 right? But no, even though in your situation, now you're able to uplift someone else, amen, that is going through something and say, hey, brother, sister, don't worry. God is with you, man. And then you don't even understand in your own mind all this stuff that I'm going. But you know what? Jesus loves you, man. And if we're going through something, hallelujah, praise God. And you just stick it up because there's going to be a big blessing that's coming after that trial. Amen. And that's the way our walk goes in this race towards him. In other words, so now again, you start to look different. You see, the purpose of God is already inside of us. And Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Amen? Amen. We have a purpose. God has prepared our purpose in advance. Your purpose is unique. Your purpose is different than my purpose. And your purpose is different than your neighbor's purpose. But we all have a purpose. Yes. To do what God has called us to do. Amen. Amen. And understand this. Many of us have great purpose. And some of us even have greater purpose. But I believe in order for us to get in this purpose. We got to get involved. Amen. Tell your neighbor. We got to get involved. We got to get involved. And understand this. But as long as we're moving towards our purpose. God will prevail. Amen. Ooh, yeah. His purpose Amen. has been set for your life. It's going to prevail. As we find our God-given purpose, God will work it out. How? By our faith and trust in His Son, Jesus Christ. Psalms 37, 23, 24 says, The Lord makes firm the steps of the one who delights in Him. Amen. Though he may stumble, he will not fall. For the Lord upholds him with His hands. Amen. Amen. We can clap for Jesus. That's good news. Amen. And as we move towards our purpose, God will lead us as a father leads a child. Amen. And when we fall, because we we will fall, God will pick us up and 
Clean us up and say, get back in that race. Come on. So in other words, move towards our purpose requires us to take some steps. Amen? Amen. I'm going to give out the points and we're pretty close. So in other words, understand that we have a purpose in our life. What are some of the things that we have to look at now? You know, we shared before. Now from a warrior, you know when you're always worried? Now you become a warrior. Amen? From being a victim, now you become a victor. From fear, now you have faith. From depression, now you defeat to more than a conqueror. Amen. From darkness, we start walking towards the light. Amen. From mourning, now we can begin to dance. Amen. From sorrow, now we begin to develop joy in our lives. So how do we get in this place? I'm glad you all asked. There's three <laughs> points. Number one, we have to separate. We have to separate ourselves, you know, from things that are going on in life. And sometimes for us, you know, if you want to become that winner, amen, we kind of have to really start setting a foundation in our life. But we have to learn to separate. That old person, we're not that old person no more. But understand that that old person always wants to rise up in our life. But when we separate ourselves... We begin to understand that, hey, wait a minute. In order for me to understand God's purpose, I have to separate of my mind of what's out there in the world and really focus on what God has for my life. Don't get me wrong. It doesn't mean everybody said, well, pastor said I didn't have to work. No, you, that's important in your life. You got to be responsible. But also you have to understand that you got to do the will of God as well. You know how we all say, oh, God bless me. He blessed me with this job and, and all that. God is blessing me and all that. And I'm just a blessing and blessing and blessing, right? But you, uh, you put your, your life or you, or you balance it. Is, is it the same way doing the will that he's called you to do? Are you really, you know, putting and engaging your life, you know, in it? You know, we talked about right now unity. Unity, we have the conferences coming up, amen, and we've been here for five years, you know, our church should be strong with the unity and also with the commitment with the people so we can keep moving the church. Amen. When we understand the church, the church is God's people. If the unity is very strong, then of course, can you imagine all the people that have been through here, living word of Upland, if we all stuck it out with the unity, how far would it be right now? Oh, come on, if we can clap for Jesus, we can clap. I'm not saying this to discourage you, but understand this. You know, we were hit for, with the COVID. For two years, we were shut down here. We were still live streaming for the people. We were doing the work that we had to do, but we were shut down for two years. We were in our house for two years, right? And in reality, you, you got to understand, we've really only been here about a year that we have really given it to the Lord. And we still have a good group. Yes, now, can you imagine that if we kind of understand, okay, we got to continue to come together as a church. How much more can we do? Yeah. Well, in unity, togetherness, that means that we're going to come together and we're going to start making this movement that needs to be done in this house. And when we're talking about the house, we're not just talking about here in Upland. It's the vision that's in this house. The vision of this house is to reach, teach, mend, and send out. Meaning sending out to your calling. It's meaning that you've been reached. It's meaning that we've been being taught. Amen. When we talk about teaching, how many of us know that we want to be good students so that way we can be the teachers as well? And then also the mending part comes, the mending of our relationships. A lot of times, even with one another or the mending, even the relationship with God, which should be first. Amen. Amen. But the only way that we're going to find out is that we have to separate. Look in Genesis 12, 1 and 2, and it talks about Abraham. Now the Lord said to unto Abraham, get thee out of the country and from the kindreds or kindreds. And from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. 
I will make you into great nations and I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. Amen. Amen. So Abraham had to separate from his family in order to be positioned for what God had planned and purpose to do in his life. Amen. How many of us know that sometimes that's very hard for us? Amen. Amen. Because why? Because we love our family, right? And then if we separate, we feel that now we're going to be alienated from them. Yep. But I'm going to tell you like this. When I separate from the love of God, I trust God to do more things of me just being focused and trusting him to take care of my family. Because one of the things that God says, if you're, fam if you're saved, your household saved. Yep. And I believe that those are our children, our grandchildren, everything that we come through, amen, or come amen. around. But the only thing is that I have to focus my eyes on him. Because if I focus on my family and my loved ones and my little ones, I'm going to get distracted. And when I get distracted, that means I'm going to take my eyes off the one who's promising me my truth with my little loved ones and all of them. Amen? So Abraham had to separate. In order to be positioned for what God had planned and purpose to do in his life. There are some of us that need to depart from certain things that hinder you. Many of us in our life, you know, in our walk, there's certain things that are hindering us. That are hindering us, you know, to receive the full engagement of what God wants to do in our life. But when we can separate and put our love in him, amen, believe me. He will bring that peace, that joy back in our lives. Amen. Amen. But then in Ephesians 4.18 says, They are darkened in their own understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Amen. Amen. Some of us need to give up certain habits. Amen. When we talk about habits, you know, we have to understand we're creatures of habits. We all have habits. Amen. Amen. As you can tell, you know, that, like I said, you know, I, I know I, I look very big, but I know because I like a lot of cheeseburgers. Amen. Hello, somebody preach it, Pastor. But some of us need to cut off from, no, I was going to say burgers, but no, from friends who are not helping your progress. How many of us know that when we start doing things for God, we, be, we begin to develop the truth in people sometimes in our life? Right? Amen. And then you understand now we got haters. Amen? Right? right? But how many of us know our haters are our elevators? Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Amen? If you're doing something for God and people begin to hate on you because you're doing something for God, hey, hallelujah, praise God, that means I'm doing something good. Amen? Yeah. You know, before, you know, if I'm looking to have people to like me, you know, and, uh, you know, so I can be with them. Hey, no, hey, no, I'm going to rather let them know the truth, amen? Right. So that way they can see, you know, what God is doing because within time, you know, God is going to do something in their life, amen? amen? And then also for number two, and we're almost done due of time, is is when we understand this and the, and the scores what we have to do, you know, to get in this purpose is we got to Drawn near with a true heart. Amen. Hebrews 10.22 said. Let us draw near to God with a sincere heart. And with the full assurance that faith brings. Having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience. And having our bodies washed. Amen. Amen. Having our bodies washed with pure water. In other words, move closer to God and make up your hearts for a conditional change. When we move to a position of prayer, it moves you into a position of power. Psalm 73, 27, 28 says, Those who are far from you will perish. You destroy all who are unfaithful to you. But as for me, it is a good to be near God. I have made the servant Lord my refuge. I will tell of our, all your deeds. You see, closeness to God is profitable. To draw near to God is a positional change. You must have a hunger and a thirst for more of God. Isaiah 44.3 says, For I will pour out water 
on the thirsty land and streams on the dry ground. I will pour out my spirit on your offsprings and my blessings on your descendants. Psalms 107 9 says, For he satisfied the thirsty land, fills the hungry with good things. If you see anyone that finds God, that person is hungry. Amen. Amen. And the uh, and the other one for that is you have to have a holy determination. Amen. Amen. And the last one, if we can all stand. The last one is you must have faith in God. In this race, in this course, you've got to have faith in God. And, um, you know, our faith gets developed through our issues in life. You know, the things we go through. You know, in Hebrews 11, 6 says, And without faith it is impossible to please God because anyone...